Hello everybody, this is Dr Christopher White and in this presentation we're going to continue looking at igneous rocks. So this video is going to correspond to section 5.11 of your textbook. Now the final environment we're going to look at for the generation of magma is the hotspot environment. So a hotspot is an area of the Earth's surface which is suffering intense magmatic activity that cannot easily be explained by its plate tectonic setting. So the classic example would be Hawaii. So Hawaii, as we know, is a chain of volcanically active islands which are located miles away from any kind of plate boundary whatsoever. So obviously we have a bit of a problem. We know that a lot of magma is produced at divergent plate boundaries. We know a lot of magma is produced at convergent plate boundaries. But in the case of Hawaii, it's miles away from any obvious source of magma. So clearly we have to explain what's going on. Another example would be the island of Iceland. Now you're thinking, hold on a second, Iceland is sitting right on top of the Mid-Atlantic Ridge. So it's sitting right on top of a divergent plate boundary. And that's correct. But as we touched on in an earlier presentation, the amount of magma at divergent plate boundaries that actually makes it to the surface, so onto the seafloor, is actually quite low. The island of Hawaii, on the other hand, is uh, sorry, the island of Iceland, on the other hand, is extremely volcanically active. So there's more magma being erupted onto the surface in that area than you should really be getting. And so once again, we have to come up with an explanation that helps to explain what's going on. And the explanation that we've come up with is mantle plumes. So what is a mantle plume? Well, a mantle plume is an area of extremely hot mantle rocks. And these bodies of extremely hot mantle rock appear to be forming very, very deep in the mantle, probably down towards the core mantle boundary. Now, because these areas of mantle rock get so hot, they naturally become less dense. Because remember, typically the hotter something is, the lower its density becomes. So these mantle rocks get heated, and so they naturally start to rise. And so our mantle plume essentially is just this blob of mantle rock that is rising up through the mantle. Now, as our mantle plume begins to head towards the lithosphere, the pressure is obviously going to be decreasing. And so what we have here is we have a blob of extremely hot mantle rocks with a steadily decreasing pressure. And this is obviously going to lead to decompressional melting of our mantle plume. So as it rises, it's going to start to melt and it's going to start producing magma. And we know the magma that's going to be produced is going to be of a mafic composition because we're melting mantle rocks. Now, if this mantle plume gets stuck underneath some oceanic crust, what's going to happen? So here's our mantle plume, and as you can see, it's gotten stuck and it's spread out along the bottom of the oceanic lithosphere. And this is perfectly normal. Our models suggest that when a mantle plume hits the bottom of the lithosphere, typically it will stop there and it will spread laterally. Now, we know that because this body of rock here is very, very hot and the pressure is now much lower than when it initially formed, it's going to undergo decompressional melting. And the magma here is going to be of a temperature probably somewhere in the region of 1,200, 300, uh, 1,300, 1,400 degrees Celsius. And so it's obviously also going to induce a certain amount of melting in the overlying lithospheric mantle as well. And so a combination of uh, mafic magma being produced from the melting of the plume and mafic magma being produced from the melting of the lithospheric mantle is going to produce a large amount of mafic magma that's going to work its way to the surface and it's going to be erupted in the form of a volcanic ocean island. And these volca volcanic ocean islands are going to have volcanoes which erupt mafic lavas. Now, this is obviously different to the types of uh, volcanically active ocean islands which are associated with ocean ocean, pla uh, ocean ocean convergent plate boundaries because those volcanic islands will typically erupt intermediate magmas. So we can see there's a compositional difference between volcanic islands associated with hotspots and volcanic islands associated with ocean ocean convergent boundaries. So the next question is obviously, well, what happens if our mantle plume gets stuck underneath some continental lithosphere? So here we go. So in the event that our mantle plume gets stuck under some continental lithosphere, one of the things that can happen is simply the uh, mafic magma can actually make its way all the way to the surface. So here's our mantle plume. It's hit the base of our continental lithosphere. 
as you can see it's undergone some melting it will also begin to melt some of the mantle rocks which is part of the lithospheric mantle here and the resulting mafic magma is rising up towards the surface and it pours out onto the surface in huge quantities and this is referred to as a flood basalt eruption so these flood basalt eruptions are typically when huge volumes of mafic lava get erupted onto the surface of the earth and there are some really you know good examples of these in earth history a classic example would be something like the Deccan Traps of India which is a flood basalt area just to give you some idea the size of the Deccan Traps it's about a quarter of the size of the country of India so it's a very very big area that got covered by these flood basalts and these flood basalts are related to mantle plumes now there is another possible thing that can happen when we have a mantle plume interacting with the continental crust so here's our mantle plume again and as you can see it's gotten stuck at the base of our continental lithosphere here once again it's going to melt some of the continental lithosphere and this is going to allow the mafic magma to steadily move up and enter the continental crust now when the mafic lava or mafic magma should I say interacts with the continental crust in this case it's going to start melting it and it's going to produce a hybrid magma which is going to be a mix mixture of melted continental crust and the mafic magma so we're going to end up with a, a magma that's going to have an approximately intermediate composition so in this case what we have is we have a big magma chamber building up in the continental crust and this big magma chamber ends up feeding multiple volcanic vents on the surface so we end up forming a very very volcanically active area so think of an area like Yellowstone National Park and so we have an area which is absolutely stuffed with volcanoes and all this magma is pouring out onto the surface well all this magma pouring out onto the surface means that magma is being removed from the magma chamber and it's being pushed out here so this means the volume of magma in the magma chamber is steadily getting smaller and because the magma chamber starts to run low on magma what happens is, is the roof of the magma chamber drops down to fill the empty space and this produces a depression on the surface of the earth which we call a caldera so this is the other possible this is the other possibility that can occur when we have a hot spot interacting with continental crust so hotspots are a relatively interesting part of geology uh, we still don't actually know exactly uh, where the hotspots form and why they form that's something that geologists are still working on so you know if you want to go out go on google have a read of that it's quite good fun uh, reading some of the papers that people have put out anyway thank you for watching this presentation and have a good day